Why was it a documentary and not another piece of artwork? You were an artist working in other media as well. Yeah. What? When did it start to crystallize for you as a nonfiction exploration? And then I want to talk about the creative process and what you chose to do aesthetically right. with the film. Right. You know, the 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 consequences of my brother's murder um, expressed, expressed itself, excuse me, differently in each one of us. And there's really no way um, that I could that I could find that was more appropriate to um, capturing those consequences um, than to sit with each person who had lived their different um, vantage point um, on my brother's murder, whether it's Kevin, you know, being dragged away from William, you know, at the scene of the crime, or if it's my mother, you know, getting to the hospital and realizing that, that William is actually dead, or, you know, any number of vantage points, right? We, we know that, um, you know, that the, the best way to get to someone's individual truth is to simply sit and let them tell you their individual truth. Uh, and that's when I realized that it wasn't going to be best as a photo essay. It wasn't going to be, you know, some sort of written piece. It certainly wasn't going to be, you know, any kind of autobiography. Um, you know, it, it needed to be something that gave each person um, their voice. And aesthetically, you know, it, it because it's such a charged story, it needed to have a formal frame. Um, it needed to be something that was hyper-composed, that was controlled, um, that that provided a platform, um, you know, upon which this really emotional story could sit, um, because otherwise it would be unwieldy. Um, it might actually be overwhelming. Um, and the important thing was to have a structure around um, the characters and around the story itself that allowed um, for, you know, the characters to be seen in their full selves and to be shot in their full selves and to you know, own their agency, but also to, to do things like make the house a character in the film, mm -hmm. right? To, to make silence and, and, and color and, you know, the upward vantage point of the camera um, and things like darkness and stillness and all of the things that, um, that were needed to evoke a period and t of, of time yeah. and also the passage of time. Um, the, that's that's why the aesthetic choices, um, you know, are um, what they are in the film. And I finally found you, Alan. Um, when I first talked to um, Alan Jacobson, who's the cinematographer for the film, about wanting to shoot things like absence and longing and loss and negative space and people who weren't there and waiting, you know, I'm I'm a fan of the long take. Right, <laughs> so and we've got like you know, like dozens and dozens of like five minute takes, right? But Alan really embraced this this idea of shooting things that we couldn't see, mm -hmm. right? And um, that was really it was crucial to to what makes Strong Island so powerful because in the absence of archival footage, yeah. right, of which there is none, none. Except for Except some for the, family videos. The family video, God help me, that sweet 16 party. <laughs> um, and the, the, the B-roll from, from, the, from the local news station, they didn't even archive the wraparound news story. They just archived the B-roll. And the B-roll is actually so short that, it, that they looped it. So, and that was it, right? The, the, there, was, there was no original footage from 1992, so we had to create um, essentially, um, the visuals of the past as well as the visuals of the present, and 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 that was something that um, I'm, I'm really proud uh, I'm really proud of, and um, that wouldn't have been possible without my you know, tremendous partnership with with Alan. I mean, it, please, yes. he's right there, right there, tall, dark, and handsome from Montana.